Welcome to Money Matters, sponsored by Evergreen Credit Union. Managing your finances during a crisis. Evergreen Credit Union has seven professionals on their financial education team. During this time of uncertainty, Evergreen Credit Union has made their financial wellness programs available to anyone virtually. Managing finances in a crisis like this is new to everyone. It's a good idea to stop and plan how you will spend your money over the next several months. If we plan wisely, we will get through this and be stronger when this is over. In Evergreen's Money Matters series, week one will help you navigate through budgeting and help you better understand how you spend your money. First, a little bit about Evergreen. We were founded in 1951. We have four locations in Portland, South Portland, Wyndham, and Naples. Evergreen invested in launching a financial wellness program three years ago. Since then, we've helped hundreds of people better understand how to manage their personal finances. We're committed to this program and we offer it for free. It's part of Evergreen's mission and part of our core values. I am a certified financial counselor with Evergreen Credit Union. My name is Brenda Pollock. I hope you can pick up some tips during the Money Matters series that will help you navigate your finances during and after this COVID-19 crisis. This week, we'll give you some facts and stats regarding Americans and how they are managing financially. Some stats might be different than other things you've seen. For instance, why do some reports have different numbers for household income? If you're curious why there's conflicting data, it's because every study has different methodologies and participants. These studies didn't survey all the same exact people at the same exact time. So it's inevitable there will be some inconsistencies across different reports. Let's get started with establishing a household budget. A household budget is all the more important in this consumer era because it teaches members of the family the worth of money. A household budget helps you to identify the areas in which you spend and take the necessary steps to curtail expenditure on those items that are non-essential and unnecessary. If you make a list of essential and non-essential items, I assure you, your spouse's list will look completely different than what your essential list looks like. The important thing is to talk about it. Respect the other's feelings regarding essentials. Successful household budgets are the result of compromise. Let's take a look at some various types of household budgeting models. Traditional budgeting. Setting up a traditional budget requires some work up front, but it can help you get a detailed picture of where your money is going. The first step is making a list that breaks out income and expenses. You can do this by creating a spreadsheet to update monthly with your numbers. Using a monthly budget worksheet to see how your income and your expenses stack up each month allows you to target areas, reduce spending, and set savings goals. Each month, you can review and adjust the amounts budgeted for each of your spending and savings goals. The pros? A traditional budget is a great way for putting your income and expenses under a magnifying glass and to rein in the spending. The 50-20-30 budget. One simple way to assign income is to divide it proportionately among three basic categories, essentials, financial obligations, and fund money. This type of budget is known as proportional budgeting or a 50-20-30 budget. The first 50% of your income goes to necessities like rent, food, utilities. The next 20% pays for expenses, and you should prioritize getting out of debt and putting some away for retirement. The final 30% is for non-essentials, shopping, traveling, dining out. 
The pros of 50-20-30 budgeting is that this method is relatively easy to use and it gives you some leeway to save money for some fun stuff. With the 50-20-30 budget, your savings and your debt repayment are lumped together. You have to be certain to be able to pay off that debt. Reverse budgeting. Reverse budgeting is a technique that prioritizes your debt repayment and your savings goals above everything else. With this method, you focus on one big goal every month. It might be paying $500 toward a credit card debt or adding $300 to your savings. You complete your monthly budget goal first and then cover the rest of your monthly expenses with the money left over. This is the simplest budgeting method since you don't need to spend much time tracking your expenses. It's rewarding to accomplish one goal every month. However, this method doesn't provide much visibility into your spending, so you could overspend if you're not careful. Value-based budgeting. This budgeting method helps you focus on saving for the things that you value most in life. You can get started by making a list of the most important things you value and rank them in order of importance. Every month, you pay your bills and your necessities first. Then you put your dispensable income towards the top priorities. If you have $800 in your budget, for example, you might save $500 for a down payment on a home and $300 for a future travel trip. This method works well if you want to focus on the big picture and stop spending money on things that don't matter to you. However, it is easy to overlook less exciting, far-off goals like retirement savings with a value-based approach. Something as simple as a budget can help you get ahead financially, and when you choose an approach that's right for you, you'll be more likely to stick with it in the long run. Start a budget from the ground up. If you've never made a budget before, it can be a good idea to start with some basics. That way, you have the foundation you need to build an effective daily spending plan that keeps you on track. You can download a budget worksheet in the meeting notes of this presentation. If for some reason you're unable to, go to our website, egcu.org, click on Benefits and Education, and select Financial Counseling. Click on the Contact Us button and send us your name and your email and we'll be sure to send you the budget worksheet you can use at home. There are also many budgeting apps available that will walk you through the steps and process of setting up a budget, but it can still be useful to know the steps before you get started. That way, you can make sure that the budgeting tool you choose does everything you need it to do. Build a budget that works for you. First, it needs to fit your specific needs and your goals, not someone else's. Two, make sure it's realistic, realistic to how you and your family live your life every day. Three, Everyone in the family needs to be aware and be engaged in the budget. Four, you should budget for dinner out or have a Christmas fund or a vacation savings. Make sure that budgeting has some perks included. Five, be sure to put anything you can towards an emergency savings fund, even when you're paying off debt. That should be number one. This is the U.S. Guidelines for Cost of Living by Category. Note, this is a guideline, but it gives you an idea of how to plan or to begin to build a budget. A good rule of thumb when purchasing a new automobile? Remember this, your automobile should not cost you more than 10% of your annual income. So if you earn $40,000 a year, the total cost for your vehicle should not exceed $4,000 a year. That includes payments, insurance, gas, registration, and repairs. So you ready to see where your money goes? Grab a piece of paper and a pencil 
and let's get started. First, we want to determine your fixed monthly expenses. Those are expenses that normally don't change, like your rent, your heating, your electric, water, property taxes, other household expenses, repairs, improvements, and home insurance. I encourage the people I work with to make one budget for every month of the year. But for this exercise, let's average your heating, for example. Take your yearly heating expense and divide it by 12. Put that number in the heating. Same with electric and water. If your property taxes are part of your mortgage, don't add them in again. Now we're going to list your personal monthly expenses. Knowing where your money goes is a great exercise to help you determine where your money actually does go each month. Is there something that you're paying for and you're not using, such as subscriptions you no longer need? Get that note, paper, and pencil going, and let's get through this section together. Be sure to list your groceries, meals out, car expenses, parking, clothing, gifts, donations, that gym cost, personal care such as haircuts, pet supplies, and vet bills, cable, internet, cell phone bills, and any other regular monthly expenses you and your family household incur. This is where we add up our debt. This includes any money you borrowed and you still owe. For this exercise, we're going to use the minimum monthly payments due each month for each of your debt. Although we like to recommend always paying more than the minimum, when creating a budget, use the minimum payment. Once your budget is complete, you can decide to put extra money you have left over on paying off debt. Now we'll talk income. You want to add up all of your household income, yours, your spouse's, any social security, second job, child support, alimony, roommate, or any other money that regularly comes in. Add that to this section. All right, now it's time to find out what your bottom line is. First, add up your monthly fixed expenses. Second, take that number and add that to your personal monthly expenses. Subtract this total number from your total monthly income. That will give you the number that you have left to pay off your debt. Add all of your minimum monthly debt payments together. Subtract that number from the amount you have left to pay off debt. That's how you determine your bottom line. People with a negative number usually didn't realize they were running short and were subsidizing their budgets with their credit cards. It may appear that they were doing okay, but their credit card debt was increasing each month. Determining what your bottom line is, is a real eye-opener for anyone going through this exercise. Is your number positive or is it a negative number? Now that you've done this exercise and you know your bottom line, what's next? Whether your budget shows a positive or a negative bottom line number, you should establish a $1,000 emergency fund. If you can save $83.50 per month for 12 months, that will give you $1,002. Voila, you have an emergency fund, and it is one of the most important things that you can do. It's part of being responsible and being able to cover an emergency. Remember, an emergency fund is just for that, an emergency. For those of you with a positive number, look to pay off your debt. List the, all your debt down. Attack the debt with the highest interest rate first by increasing the payments you make each month. Focus on paying off one at a time. Once paid, use the funds used to pay that one towards another. One at a time, pay off the debt and don't create new debt. Is your budget in the negative? Start here. Adjust anywhere possible. Look at your grocery list. Do you need the subscriptions? Can you cut off cable for a while? Be disciplined. Don't get discouraged, but make a plan. And most of all, 
be patient. While you're getting your budget together, be sure to put any money away you can towards establishing that emergency savings account. This will help you create a new habit of savings, not spending. So why is a budget so important? You've got to balance your income and your expenses. Budgeting ensures you'll have enough money to do what you need. It will help get you out of debt and keep you out of debt. It will help you save for things that are really important to you. And you will spend your money more wisely and plan for long-term financial goals. Creating a financial plan helps you see the big picture and set long-term and short-term goals. A crucial step in mapping out your financial future. When you have a financial plan, it's easier to make financial decisions and stay on track to meet your goals. This is Brenda Pollock. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll join us next week for credit scores, how they're calculated, and how to optimize your score. This is Money Matters, sponsored by Evergreen Credit Union.